Hey folks, Paul Abernathy here. Welcome back to another video series here for the 2023 edition of the National Electrical Code. Now today we're gonna to be, a, it's gonna be a quick one today. We're gonna to show you what happens now when we have a branch circuit and we're supplying one cooktop and up to two wall mounted ovens. Now in previous video, we explained how to size your branch circuit to a single cooktop or even to a single oven. And now we're going to look at what happens if I'm in the same room, let's say a kitchen, and I want to bring one branch circuit to a junction box, and I want to tap out of that junction box to supply an oven, wall-mounted oven, and a counter-mounted cooking unit, like a cooktop. How would I do that, and what are the rules that are in play here? Okay. So we're going to look at that in a second, but I want to remind you, if you really want to learn the National Electrical Code at a much higher level, and you've been struggling, then our course is for you. Go to this website right here, fasttracksystem.com. We have tons of free blogs as well, so go read our blogs. There's so many blogs on so many different types of calculations, they don't cost you anything. And, and go look at it. But if you come to the realization that you really want to learn the National Electrical Code, whether it's preparing for an electrical exam, or you just feel that on the job you want to have a better grasp of the NEC, then our course is designed for you. We don't pay fancy advertisements. We don't put it in magazines, but we have over 5,000 students in our programs because they know that they're high quality, great graphics, and I'm always here to help you. And that's worth a lot, I think, is to have somebody that's got your back. And that's what we do here at the Fast Track System, okay, at Electrical Code Academy, all right? So enough of the sales pitch. Let's take you into today's brief lesson and show you how you would work through that if you are running a single branch circuit and supplying one cooktop and up to two wall mounted ovens, how would you size that? Okay, so let's kind of go into the lesson. All right, so over here in the lesson, the first thing that we're gonna remind you is that in this, and I'm gonna show you a picture, so again, it's worth a thousand words so that you can kind of see what we're talking about. So this is what we're talking about right here. So this is, the branch circuit right here at the bottom, okay, right here, and it's being coming from the panel to the junction box under the cabinet, and it's branching off with taps. Now, these could be you, what you run from that junction box and hardwired into, let's say, the, the wall-mounted oven, or it could come with WIP that already has the conductors at the appliance, okay, the cooking appliance. Either way, whether you run it or it comes with the appliance, okay, they're going to fall under these tap rules here, okay? All right, so what are the rules here for this? Bring it back down here so we can look at it. All right, so A, it says the tap conductors from a 50 ampere brand circuit. Now, I'll remind you something. In the 2023 edition of the National Electrical Code, um, it's what we're working in. It says that it can't exceed 50 amps. So it could be 40 amps or 50 amps, right? Uh, typically, it's not going to be less than that, but it's going to be uh, 40 amps or 50 amps, uh, and that's what it's going to be supplying that branch circuit. And if it doesn't exceed 50 amps, then I'm allowed to do these tap rules. And here's what it says. The ampacity of those tap conductors that are going one off, let's say, from the junction box up to the oven, and then one of the taps that are going up to the cooktop, they have to have an ampacity of at least 20 amps first off, right? But they also have to have an ampacity of the actual individual unit that's being served. So you have to do a calculation so to, to determine that. So the taps are basically the sizing is you take the nameplate of the cooking unit and you simply divide that by 240 and you'll get an ampacity value. Right? And then you'll size your conductors according to that. Now, we kind of did that in a previous video where we sized individual units. So when we're sizing those taps, it has to be at least 20 amps, okay? But it also has to be adequate to handle whatever the load calcs to serve that individual unit. So 20 is a minimum. So they have to be at least 12 gauge, okay? Uh, so, um, and it's not to exceed 50 to be able to use this rule. So in our case, we had an oven and we had a cooktop. And those taps are not going to be less than 12 gauge or 20 amps. 
Um, and that again applies to any of the pigtails that would be already pre-done in the equipment or if you're just hardwiring it and taking it up yourself. That would be the same application. And the code reminds you that they need to be uh, not longer than necessary. We don't need an extra loops and you need to just be long enough to get from the junction box to the piece of equipment, okay? Now, what rule allows me to do this? Because we do know there are some rules for branch circuits that come into play. What allows me to do this? So we're gonna go look at 210.19C, exception number one. That's the first thing we're gonna look at. So let's go over the code. And I'll remind you, we're in the 2023 edition of the NEC. So here is your household ranges in cooking appliance. And just so you show you where we're at, we're in 210.19, we're talking conductors. That's the whole premise here. These tap conductors is what we're talking about. All right, so we're gonna go down here to C and we're gonna read it. It says, the branch circuit conductor supplying household ranges, wall-mounted ovens, counter-mounted cooking units, and other household cooking appliances shall have an ampacity not less than the rating of the branch circuit and not, ne not less than the maximum load to be served. Okay, it's the general rule. Okay, you got an ampacity, the load to be served, you gotta make sure that your conductors are at least sized to handle that load. Now it says for ranges, eight and three quarter KW or more rating, the minimum branch circuit rating shall be 40 amps, okay, for, the, for these conductor sizes. Now that's for range, we're not talking about range here, we're talking about a, a cooktop and we're talking about a in-wall mounted oven, okay? So now exception is what we wanna look at right here, right here. It says conductors tapped from the brand circuit not exceeding 50 amperes. So it could be 40 amperes, could be 50 amperes. It just can't exceed 50 amperes. Uh, supplying the electric range, wall-mounted electric ovens, and counter-mounted electric cooking units shall have an ampacity of not less than 20 amperes. Okay, so that's those tap conductors and shall be sufficient to, to, uh, for the load to be served. Obviously, you got to do your calculations using the nameplate to find out what the load is. And again, when you do that, it might be less than 20 amps, but still, the conductors can't be less than 20 amps, right? which would be a 12 gauge. All right. So it also goes on to say these tap conductors include, include any conductors that are part of the lead supplied uh, with the appliance. So that's that whip, if you will. Uh, that are smaller than the branch circuit conductors. Okay, the branch circuit being what's coming to the junction box because we're talking taps. So obviously these taps are going to be smaller. Okay, now typically the manufacturer will handle those if they're included, but there's a lot of occasions now where the manufacturers are not including any whips at all with their uh, cooking units. So you have to figure that out, right? And it also says these taps shall not be longer than necessary to service the appliance. Make sense? So that's what we're, we're talking about. Now, there is an exception number two that we're not gonna be talking about in this video because we're just talking about sizing the hot conductors, but we will be in another video talking about neutral applications. But just to summarize it, it just reminds us that once we size the conductors for this rule here, it reminds us, it says, you know, neutral conductors of a three wire branch circuit supplying a household range, wall mounted oven, counter mounted cooking unit, shall be permitted to be smaller than the ungrounded conductors, where the maximum demand of the range of eight and three quarter or more rating has been calculated according to column C of 220.55, okay? But such conductors shall have an ampacity of not less than 70% of the branch circuit rating and not smaller than 10 amperes. So this is the neutral. So if I ran a branch circuit to a range, and this is why people use things like uh, when you're running range in SCR where the neutral is actually smaller, it's because it can't be less than 70% of whatever the rating is of the overcurrent protection. So whatever it is, 40 amps, 50 amps, okay, multiply that by 70%, and it can't be less than that, but in no case can it be smaller than a 10 gauge, and that's the neutral. I said I wasn't gonna cover that, we're obviously gonna cover neutrals in a different video in the Fast Track series, but I just wanted to, to call that out and point it out. Also, I'll remind you, if you happen to have Link and you're, you're a member of Link on NFPA, then you can go to this down here and it gives you a 
really good explanation down here of all that so you can read it and get a little bit better uh, understanding of how that's to take place. But I just wanted to give you the quick synopsis of that um, and how you apply it. Now, that has absolutely nothing to do with our application that I wanted to discuss today with these tap conductors, things like that, but the rule would still kind of, kind of apply. It's, it's, it's an, an exception, okay? All right, now, so let's say we covered that. Let's go back now to our lesson and see what we have. So when we know what size is here, as long as it doesn't exceed 50 and those tap conductors are at least 12 gauge for 20 amps, and maybe more depending on whatever our load calc was uh, for those, those appliances. Next, it reminds us that B, it says where a single branch circuit feeds one cooktop and one or two ovens in the same room, add the nameplate ratings of the appliances treating the total KW as one range to be found in table 220.55. Again, this is note six. Now, in the 2020 edition, this was all under note four. It was kind of broken down and it just was one long thing and you had to read one rule if they were individual units. And then if it was like this, where you had a cooktop and a range, uh, then, I mean, a cooktop and an oven, then you were able to add the nameplates together and treat it as one in order to come up with the size of the circuits, right? So for the branch circuit. So in this case right here, whatever the rating is of this cooktop, move this up a little bit for you, whatever the rating is of this cooktop, I will also add that KW to the rating of this oven, and then I would go up to table 220.55, and Let's say that I added these together and they were 10 kW. Well, we know that in the table 220.55 in column C, because we're over eight and three quarters, so we're going to be in column C. Um, and you always use column C unless note three applies, and that means it would be something less than eight and three quarter, but not the case here. And we'll talk about ranges in a totally different video if that confuses you. Here's the key. You treat it as one range in order to find out what the, 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 the size of the branch circuit that's going to run to that junction box, all right? And for us, we know that it's going to either be a 40 or a 50, all right? So let's just say we did it at 10 kW. They added two together as 10 kW, okay? Now, that branch circuit, when we come up with the 10, uh, 10 kW, we're going to go to 220.55. We're going to look at column C, and we're going to see what that treated as one range. What is the KW we're going to use? So let's go to the code. And we'll go to 220.55. And here we are. And I want to show you. So where do we get that rule? So that's down in the notes. So I want to make sure I show you the note. So here's note six that we're applying right now. And you'll notice that in the 2023, you've got a few more notes. And that's because note four was broken out to be a little easier to understand. 2020, it just is one, again, one rolling note. Well, in 2023, it's broken out. It makes it a little easier to understand. But let's look at six. It says the brand circuit load for a counter-mounted cooking unit and not more than two wall-mounted ovens, all supplied from a single brand circuit and located in the same room, so it's caveat, same room, same like the kitchen, shall be calculated by adding the nameplate ratings of the individual appliances and treated this total as equivalent to one range. So we said it was whatever the five on one, and let's, let's say it's six on one and four on the other, added them together, it was 10 kW. So then we go up here, and since it is only one appliance, treating it as one range, and it is obviously, as you can see, it's over eight three quarter anyway, and then note three wouldn't have applied anyway here in this situation, so we're in column C. And it's not over 12, so it's just eight kW, and that's it. So once you know it's eight kW, that's 8,000 watts, 8,000 divided by, 240 equals 33.3. .3. So that's the ampacity we need. So let's go to 310.16, select a conductor. So let's go on and do that while we're here. Kind of walk this one out. All right, and this is very unique to note six when we have, again, 
one cooktop and up to two ovens. Okay, wall-mounted ovens. So we're gonna go to 31016, see what we can get for an ampacity. If you got your code book, go there yourself. All right, so we're right here and we're still under the 60. Why are we under the 60? Well, because it's 100 amps or less uh, and the conductors are, I believe, are gonna be one gauge or smaller. And we have to remember the rules in 110.14c. So go check that out, okay, if you're not familiar with it. But be aware, we do have a D-rating demystified 3.0 that's coming out shortly. And only available over on FastTracksTube.com, FastTracksTube or FastTracksTV.com. And if you want to subscribe, you'll get all those videos. All right, so in this case right here, um, let's see what we got to do. So we needed one that was 33.3 .3 amps. We're under the 60. Uh, because we don't know anything about the terminals and we don't know what the receptacle rating is. So we're going to go with the 110.14c rules and 33. So here's the 10. It's not going to work. So we have to go with a 40. So we have to go with an 8 gauge. So an 8 gauge copper is good for 40 amperes, right? So if it's good for 40 amps, then do we have an overcurrent protective device that's rated for 40? Absolutely. So we're going to choose that, make our life simple. And we're gonna choose a 40 amp overcurrent device and that will protect that eight gauge copper. And that's what we're gonna run. And then that's what we run to the junction box and then that's where our tap conductors can come off from there. Make sense? Okay. All right, so that's kinda of what we're doing in this lesson right here. And a couple little extra details to tell you is just, just to tell you, since we're here anyway, you notice C, is, see how this is a junction box under here? And you're thinking, well, where's the disconnect? Well, you don't need the disconnect. Uh, it's not required if the branch circuit switch or circuit breaker can be locked in the open and that's opened in off position. If that's the case, 110.25 allows you and 422.31B, then if obviously if that's the case, then I can have it locked in the off position, okay? Um, we will go more detail on that in other episodes uh, that we talk about the little nuances of disconnects and things like that. Clearly, when we talk about 110.25, we're going to cover all those little pieces. And then lastly, D says it is permissible to feed one cooktop and up to two wall-mounted ovens from one brand circuit. And that was based on note six. And you saw how we did that. And we saw how we sized the conductor. Again, it can be up to 50 amps. It can't be over 50 amps. It could be 40 amps. Okay, typically you're gonna do that. Obviously it couldn't be 30 in this case because the load was 33.3, .3, so it's gonna be 40. And typically since we gotta run eight gauge anyway, and it's good for 40 amps, then we're gonna protect that conductor at its ampacity. Why go less than that? Why use a 35? We, we, we have the ability to use 40 and that's what we wanna use, okay? All right, hopefully you got something out of that. Uh, and uh, if you, if you really want to learn the NEC, I recommend you get in our Fast Tracks program right there. You always can ask me questions. If something in our program doesn't make sense to you, uh, then I'm more than happy to uh, try to lay it out for you and explain it. We have the Sparky Hub. We have Fast Tracks uh, Tube with the videos. We have uh, Fast Tracks Chat, which is a chat room that allows you to call a moderator into the chat room at any time if you have a question. Um, as long as it's not after hours, um, you know, typically we'll be there within five to 10 minutes. And if we're not there, just type your question and you can check back later. We'll answer your question. So many ways to get help in our program. Uh, we're not like anybody else. Our program really never leaves you hanging. We're always there to give you additional support. You can talk to me directly. I'm always there to help. Okay. All right, folks, hopefully you got something out of this. It's been helpful to you. Uh, and uh, you know what? We're going to do a video here shortly that talks about sizing branch circuits to just ranges, things you need to know, because there are some nuances when you're sizing them to ranges, and there's some minimum sizing when it comes to the branch circuit. So check us out in the next video. Till next time, folks, stay safe. God bless. Check out our website right here, FastTrackSystem.com. Thumbs up and give us a like and share it. Hopefully we'll see you in another video.